the reason that this is relevant is, of course, teleology and all mental phenomena um, have a teleological character, have a purposeful character, a representational character, an intentional character, a meaningful character, and a character of normativity, of value. Um, nevertheless, we are sort of faced with two ways of interpreting this. One is what I call the homunculus uh, approach, which is to somehow find teleology to find mind, consciousness, experience, representation, effectively already there somehow. A little man hiding in the head that's doing all the work. The problem with this, of course, that little man has to have a little man in his head, and so on on down the, the hierarchy. Um, now, it could well be elephants all the way down, or little men all the way down, uh, however you want to think about it. Um, but uh, it's not an explanation to say this. Uh, this is a problem even for explanations that assume that the world somehow is intrinsically teleological, intrinsically psychic, uh, what's called panpsychism, the idea that somehow in all aspects of the world there's mentality in some even minor sense. Uh, the problem with that is it is also a black box. It doesn't tell you how it comes about. It just sort of posits it in the world. Uh, my effort is to do the opposite, to tell you that it does exist in the world and here's how it comes about. However, the other alternative is an alternative that most of the sciences today have embraced, and I call this the golem alternative. The golem, of course, uh, from mythology, is a creature made of mud that is animate and acts and looks like a person but has no soul, no mind, no discernment, no experience, and just does terrible things because it blindly behaves in the world like computers do today. Um, in fact, I would say that our computer-driven world is a world driven by golems. Uh, and golems have no sense. They have no soul. They have no value. Uh, they just do things. Um, and below this, I put a quote by one of my favorite authors, actually a physical chemist who won the Nobel Prize for his work. But he ends Towards the end of one of his books, he makes the following claim. We need an account of the physical world in which it isn't absurd to claim that it produced us. And what I mean by us is us with our subjectivity, us with our feeling, us with our purposefulness. Um, we today have a science that, in effect, uh, makes it absurd that we exist if teleology doesn't exist. Um,